And now, live in studio, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Yes, here we are again another day committed to being your consumer advocate, all about helping you understand your buying decisions, making you just a bit more street smart here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. We don't care if you're climbing a corporate ladder or if you throw a ladder in your truck on the way to work. This show's for you. We want to help you win in any marketplace by being your resource for all things real estate, credit, finance, estate and tax planning, health and nutrition, 80 different categories, over 50 show partners, all with an effort to help you win. The only thing I'm addicted to right now is winning. Save our hotline number in your phone. At some point, you may need it. 813-670-7372. That is our Consumer Advocate Hotline. 813-670-7372. You used to call me on my cell phone. And bookmark our website, ConsumerQB.com. A plethora of information available for you on our website at ConsumerQB.com. QB.com. Hot property listing from the Platinum MVP team, 6417 Yvette Drive up in Hudson Beach. This is Pasco County, beautiful property right in Hudson. And this property is going to be a deep water access canal to the Gulf of Mexico. So bring your boat, bring your jet skis, enjoy the best of Florida living, the lifestyle that you deserve here in Tampa Bay. Huge, spacious wooden deck as well on this property at 6417 Yvette Drive in Hudson. And a great show lineup up for you today we got chief dennis jones hillsborough county uh, fire chief on the show today he's going to talk about some, some consumer tips things to do things to avoid what to look out for uh, for all things when it comes to you know protecting your family protecting your home some of the fire threats that we have and of course you know here we are in hurricane season already and our friend fred d felice waterscience.us going to talk about some of the things that are in your water that you might not think and how uh, you think you have a, a system in place with a water softener that's good for you it's actually not it's wasting water and hear about fred d felice waterscience.us and all of the stuff that is in your water supply and your own family's water supply right here on the consumer quarterback show great lineup for you here and we appreciate you hanging out with us follow us online at brandon rhymes one on instagram and twitter consumer quarterback show page on facebook as well and when we come back we have our expert contributors in studio today we're going to spend some time with chief dennis jones hillsborough county fire chief right here on the consumer quarterback show make sure you just check us out online uh, Brandon Rhymes one on Instagram and Twitter, Consumer Quarterback Show page on Facebook, and ConsumerQB.com. We'll be right back after this short break. Don't go anywhere. This is Chris Boss, former FBI lead hostage negotiator and owner of the Black Swan Group, and you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show hosted by my friend Brandon Rhymes. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372, online at ConsumerQB.com.
listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, online at consumerqb.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813-670-7372. All right, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm your host, Brandon Rhymes owner of the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty, helping you win in your real estate deals, buying, selling, or investing. We would love to talk to you. A big shout out to our friends at Golf Cart Depot. Say hello to Marty and his team. Golf Cart Depot of Tampa Bay. Test drive today. They've got two locations, one up in beautiful Lando Lakes. The other is in Clearwater. And they've got the EasyGo Star EV Icon Electric. Got the Cushman as well. Pre-owned, remanufactured golf carts available for our friends over at Golf Cart Depot. Make sure you let them know that the real estate quarterback sent you and take them up on those special offers uh, and incentives. And attention builders, developers, 12208 Four Oaks Road here in Tampa Bay. This is a new listing for our team, and we've got a great opportunity for uh, a builder, developer, somebody that wants to go in and develop this property at 12208 Four Oaks Road in Tampa. It's a prime opportunity in the heart of Tampa Bay. Five acres, M-O-L, future land use is residential units, up to nine units per acre. Multifamily seems to be the highest and best use for this property. Great opportunity right here in beautiful Tampa Bay. And let me take you over to Dunedin. I've got a motivated seller at 212 Bunker Hill in Dunedin, Florida. This is beautiful property right on the way to the the uh, Honeymoon Island, you got some great waterways out there, awesome restaurants, surrounded by beauty, uh, the beauty of Tampa Bay nature right here in Tampa Bay. Check out 212 Bunker Hill Lane in Dunedin, and you can see all of our real estate listings at PlatinumMVPTeam.KW.com. Somewhere, somewhere sunny and 75. All right, we're going to welcome in uh, Fire Chief. we got Hillsborough County Fire Chief Dennis Jones on the phone. Hey, Dennis. Good afternoon. Hey, thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know you guys are busy and uh, joining us here. And, and this first time talking to a fire chief on the show here. We've had, you know, the mayors and police chief and, and uh, sheriffs on the show. Uh, let's start a little bit with, with your background and maybe where you're from and, and, you know, what we eventually we want to talk about what we can do as consumers to help assist you and to find men and women that are working with you at the fire uh, department. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm a fourth generation native of Hillsborough County and grew up in uh, the city of Tampa, a public school product, and uh, was uh, in high school, through high school and into college, uh, looking at being in pre-med. That was kind of a dream of mine all my life. I got to USF, didn't like it so much. My uh, Fiance at the time, now my wife of 42 years, said, uh, what about the fire department? My dad was a firefighter, and uh, I decided to pursue a career in fire service and fell in love with it and haven't regretted a day of it. Uh, now over 42 years uh, in the service and absolutely love what I'm doing. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's nice to be, that you know, have a passion about what you do for work. And so you've been in it for quite a while and you know, right now, what is the role of the chief and what's what's the role of the fire chief? Talk to us a little bit more about, you know, how many stations you oversee. So um, uh, Hillsborough County Fire Rescue has 44 stations. Uh, one of those is a rescue only. That's an ambulance. But uh, 43 fire engines, 33 rescue ambulances. We have four truck companies, ladder trucks. We have uh, a number of specialty apparatus, heavy rescue hazardous materials, ventilation unit, air trucks. We have a lot of uh, special equipment, tankers, water tankers, and um, and uh, brush trucks, just all, all manner of vehicle. And they're spread out throughout the 900-plus square miles of Hillsborough County, unincorporated. The three cities, Tampa, Plant City, and Temple Terrace, have their own fire departments. I actually started my career 1978 in the city of Tampa, worked my way up through that organization, Retiring as the fire chief in 2010, uh, took a short break, uh, actually six months, and then I did some training in my off uh, in my retirement time. In 2015, I uh, got contacted by Hillsborough County and uh, came over here as a as the fire chief. I've been here since uh, April 27, 2015. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. And this summer, it seems like a pretty dry summer already that, you know, we do get patches of rain here and there. Uh, have you seen the, the weather uh, affecting the fire climate? 
the uh, it certainly dries out all the brush. Uh, we we welcome those summer rains when they come, uh, but we are on alert for uh, you know we're always on alert for those. There's still a lot of areas of Hillsborough County uh, with a lot of brush and undergrowth and a lot of uh, forestry areas that are a concern for us. And the heat certainly plays a role in our ability to fight the fire. Uh, you know we're putting on you know 40 pounds of of a protective gear that's quilted and insulated and designed to keep the heat off of us. It also is designed to keep the heat inside of us. So it, it kind of heats us up. So uh, summer's a difficult time for that. Yeah, I can imagine. We appreciate all you guys do out there as well. If you just join us, we're talking with Fire Chief Dennis Jones here, Hillsborough County Fire Chief Dennis Jones on the Consumer Quarterback Show. I'm your host, Brandon Rimes. And, you know, we're all fighting. We're all dealing with this adjustment due to COVID-19, a.k.a. the coronavirus and, you know, how are you and your fighter fighters, uh, you know, coping with the virus? Yeah, that has been a challenge for us. Uh, so um, March 1st, it was a Sunday afternoon, got the phone call from the Department of Health that we had our first patient. Had about a week that we were watching it. And then uh, March the 12th is when all the excitement became uh, real. We had a state declaration, a federal decora declaration, and then the county obviously had a local state of emergency, and we've been uh, pretty hard at it since the second week of March, going now in over four months. Um, it's been a different world for us. We've done a lot of uh, creative staffing. Uh, we, at one point, had almost 160 members of the department off for quarantine, isolation, or had tested positive. Um, we had to cancel vacations for a period of time uh, just to cover the staffing. Uh, our responses are a lot different because, as you know, there's a county uh, face covering or mask ordinance. We've been practicing that since very early. Uh, every patient that we respond to, we put a surgical mask on the patient, and then our crews are always responding with a mask and gloves. And those are things that aren't just, that's not typical in everyday life. Right. Uh, every, every one of our firefighters um, that we hire is either a paramedic or has to become a paramedic within three years. So, Every engine, every ladder truck, every rescue ambulance has, has paramedics on board, and 85% of the calls we respond to are medical, and we never know if it's a COVID call until we actually get there many times until after we deliver them to the hospital. So it's definitely changed our life and our approach to uh, the emergency calls. Dennis, if I heard you right, you mentioned at one point you had 166 people that were kind of laid off or, or furloughed. Uh, what's the total member count? What's What's the total number of so uh, just to be clear, they weren't um, laid off or furloughed. That's a bad term for us. Okay. For us, they were um, they were quarantined, so quarantined. they were put off duty. They were still being paid. <clears throat> It'd be like being sick, but they were quarantined. Our total count: um, we have one thousand fifty sworn members, so wow. over a thousand and um, one thousand fifty, and uh, we had as many as uh, right at one hundred and sixty that were off at one time. So uh, about 15% of our employees were, were off because they had either been exposed to or were positive uh, isolation or quarantine. Right. Okay. Awesome. Quite an impact. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Now, one of the things we do, we bring on different attorneys. We've had several different attorneys uh, on the show from different specializations. Uh, one of our attorneys uh, had mentioned that he's, he follows closely what happens with work comp law, workers' compensation. And uh, Jason Coble, attorney Jason Coble, that is. And so when you think about post-traumatic stress disorder, the, you know, the syndrome that happens when, when first responders are showing up, uh, constantly seeing, you know, really bad, you know, situations that unveil, uh, the, the legislature, the Florida State Legislature recently made changes to where now those folks that aren't experiencing physical uh, but just mental uh, from out trauma from that, those situations, now they have access to work comp. Have you seen that play uh, play out with your thousand plus members? Uh, yes, sir. We have. Uh, that's something that the fire service has been relatively aware of and active in uh, for quite some time with uh, with um, you know programs to help deal with that um, critical incident stress debriefing and critical incident stress management. We have a peer support team here. Uh, we uh, we also have uh, you know chaplaincy programs and things of that nature, but it, it has certainly been a a problem. You see it you see it certainly from the military, and uh, 
I'm, I'm not going to compare our firefighters to soldiers, uh, but they are seeing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of trauma in life, right. um, a lot of death, sometimes with uh, very young, uh, and it and it does have a, a cumulative effect, and it does affect our members. And uh, this this particular governor, as well as the CFO Jimmy Petronas, have been very aggressive in getting those benefits for our firefighters. Uh, to provide uh, some support for them uh, in dealing with these issues, and you know, c- considering that workers' comp is it was a big deal for us. Right. Yeah. Absolutely agree. And that's a that's a great point to make is that it's you know it, it's definitely something that we have to get behind. We have to support uh, from that perspective. And when it comes to you know the the you know the lifestyle, you know, imagine waking up every day, you know, and the police officers as well. They're kind of you know, they're under, you know, different scrutiny and some would say attack, you know, the sheriff's department, um, you know, when you, with the talks about defund police, but when you think about fire, man, you guys wake up every day, you go to, you go to work, never knowing what, how that day could turn out, uh, could be a very, you know, rough situation. And, you know, to say the least, so we commend you guys. Thanks so much for all you do. We really appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. And if we just, if you just join us, we're talking with fire chief Dennis Jones here on the consumer quarterback show. I'm your host, Brandon rhymes. And, when you th- we talk a lot about real estate on the show and sustainability. We've had uh, Pasco County uh, Commissioner Jack Mariano on recently and talked about sustainability and you know growth where we're going to grow and develop because there's so many people, of course, from New York, New Jersey, California, the high tax states moving down to Florida uh, in record numbers. Really, you know, especially with the the move, the flight from urban areas to more rural areas as well in the low tax states of, of Florida. But how do you, I'm just curious on how, what factors go into influencing where a new station will come up, a new fire station will be located, you know, population density, I'm I'm imagining. Yes, sir. So that's a great question. Uh, Since I've been here, uh, 2015, um, we spent almost an uh, an entire year building our first master plan. Now, the department as a whole, prior to my arrival, had had uh, professional companies come in and consultants and do master plans. We did it internally. And that's one of the biggest challenges. The growth has been just astronomical. Uh, Just a decade ago, we were running probably about 80,000 calls, and now we're running over 110, 113,000 calls a day with the same, uh, with the same, essentially the same number of people responding. And so, uh, the population growth. I think they they estimate like 25,000 uh, a year coming to Hillsborough County, one of the fastest growing counties in the state, in the nation. Um, and we were, uh, we hadn't really built a new fire station for I think uh, 12 years, 13 years. Uh, we got our first station in 2018, um, was our first new station in over a decade. So uh, as you can imagine, the population has astronomically grown, but the fire station, the fire department has not. Uh, I know that county administration is very supportive of a fire rescue, but there are limited dollars with everything that needs to be done. You know, transportation is the is a major concern, as as everyone knows. Um, but the only solution is to put put up fire stations. There, there was a uh, there was a kind of a formula before. There's a very well known uh, hamburger chain, and they would say wherever that rest, wherever they build a restaurant, you need a fire station nearby. Uh, we do a little more than just look at where a McDonald's or a Publix or a Burger King might be. Right. Uh, we we look at population growth. We look at census. We look at road networks and where the new roads are going. Who has platted new subdivisions? And we we do a, we get very involved using uh, GIS mapping and all the data that's available to us. Population growth data. University of Florida does a lot of work with that. So we use uh, we use data and facts to try to drive our decision, and then compare that to uh, National Fire Protection Association standards for response times. So we're tracking our response times to emergency calls. And um, the the uh, the master plan that we recently completed, with the help of a of a professional company, uh, recommended 24 new fire stations. So we're wow. we're at 44 now. They recommended another 24. Um, and and that was uh, essentially 24 now. So you know we'd say in, within the next decade we do need to see some increase in order to deliver the level of service that we would expect to deliver to our citizens. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like like definitely you know where's the money come from? The questions start coming in my mind, popping in my mind. Um, 
where the money would come from and that type of thing. Uh, we're talking with Dennis Jones here, Hillsborough County Fire Chief on the Consumer Quarterback Show, and I'm your host, Brandon Rhymes. Now, we're a consumer advocate-based program here. We talk a lot about how we help consumers from real estate, credit, finance, estate, and tax planning. We're going to talk about clean water today on the show. Um, what would be some consumer tips, things that homeowners can do, uh, automobile drivers can do? What are, what are some things that you see maybe common occurrences that we can try to help uh, either eliminate or increase to you know help help you and your team as uh, the fire chief? Well, probably the first thing, and you know, I mentioned traffic before, but there's a state law, you pull over for emergency vehicles, pull over to the right. Uh, traffic is always going to be a concern. Um, and so that would be one thing that would allow us to get to our uh, the destinations on emergency calls more quickly on emergency responses. So that would be one thing to help us get to you uh, is to be aware. And I know with air conditioning systems and radios blaring and all that kind of stuff, of course, not the consumer quarterback show, but uh, keep your radio at a, at a normal volume. Uh, and and move over for the emergency vehicles. And then from a home safety standpoint, you know, everyone should have smoke alarms, check the batteries regularly, make sure the system's working, have an escape plan from your home. Uh, have, those are all things that are helpful. Businesses, you know, certainly maintain those uh, fire escape, fire exit plans, uh, fire exit pathways. All of your systems need to be up to date and regularly inspected. Those are the things that will lower the uh, the risk to the public and uh, make our job easier when we have to be called out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, those are good tips there. Pull over, of course. Get get to the side of the curb. Let the you know the vehicles pass by. One of the things too, I think, is one of the biggest misnomers in the kitchen is if there's a grease fire on the on the kitchen top. You know, talk to us about the different types of fires you see and some of the big mistakes that people make. Yeah, that is a that is a common thing to happen if you have a grease fire. And- you grab a, a cup of water, a bottle of whatever, and throw water on it. It spreads it. Uh, that's one of the, the things that you should not do. We recommend fire extinguishers in the home, and it should be a powder-type extinguisher and certainly accessible and near the kitchen. That's one of the more common places. Um, the, uh, the, you know, overnight uh, in bedrooms and that sort of thing, that's why the smoke alarms are so important. But uh, recommend everyone have uh, an active and functional uh, fire extinguisher in their home, know where it is, and know how to access it. And then uh, just being aware of your situ- of your situation and make sure that uh, those people in your home are aware of that as well. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if, if I've got some fire, some uh, smoke, uh, not smoke detect, fire extinguishers I've had for years, and I look at them and it's gone down into the red is that is that a service that the fire department will? I mean, can can consumers bring those in and have them recharged on site? No, years and years ago, that was a function of the departments. Uh, now there are many uh, private companies. If you just you know Google fire extinguishers, you'll probably get a dozen different companies that do that for a living. Okay. Um, if it's down into the red, it's not going to be functional uh, almost definitely, and. Uh, you know, they, they will certify it. They'll certify it for a period of time. They'll punch the card, and you'll know that you've got a, a work. And you think about the cost of it. It, you know, might seem expensive to you, uh, you know, ten, twenty, thirty dollars $30, but that's something that could save your life, yeah. and it's going to last you for a year or more. So um, that's certainly something that – great question, and there are a lot of companies that can help you with that. Find somebody that has good recommendations and uh, – and, uh, you know, keep your extinguishers up to date and functional. Okay, will do, Dennis. All right, Dennis Jones, Hillsborough County Fire Chief on the Consumer Quarterback Show. Uh, Coming up, when we come back, we're going to take a quick break here. We have our feel-good story of the day coming up. Rescue dogs save sleeping neighbors from house fire. Our feel-good story of the day. Also, we got Fred DeFelice in the house, waterscience.us. Think about all the things in your water that you might not know in there. And the the list goes on and on. It's uh, bacteria, pharmaceuticals, uh, all types of of bad stuff in your water. We're going to talk about that chlorine, chloramine. Uh, We're going to talk about that with Fred DeFelice and the solutions to it. Stay with us. Consumer Quarterback Show, ConsumerQB.com. Thanks for listening to my daddy's show. For more information, go to ConsumerQB.com. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com.
listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. Online at ConsumerQB.com. All right. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. Brandon Rhymes here. I'm your host of the Consumer Quarterback Show, powered by the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty. And I want to say hello to our friends, uh, Replenish IB Solutions. I just went over to Replenish IB Solutions right there in South Tampa, right on Gandy Boulevard, where all that construction's going on. You got the overhead traffic there. Uh, Replenish IB Solutions is the science of nutritional balance. Now, I went in, sat down. The nurse uh, hooked me up, very nice, very gentle, hooked me up to a, a vitamin infusion drip. And it was the, I did one of the uh, Myers cocktails. So you probably heard of the Myers cocktail. It's got all the C's, the B's, all the great stuff, zinc, throwing some extra zinc in there, vitamin infusion drip. Say hello to our friends, Replenish IV Solutions, Stephen and Lisa Gunnan over at Replenish IV Solutions. And it makes you feel good. You know, you feel good that you have that immunity boost and it's just something good for you. I do it at least once a month and have been for some time now. So really appreciate our friends over at Replenish IV Solutions, the science of nutritional balance. And a couple of hot property listings here. We got 520 George Street South. This is a waterfront beauty right on the lake, and that's Lake Tarpon in Tarpon Springs. The other side of the lake is actually Palm Harbor. You got your own private boat dock. You have a mother-in-law suite. Great opportunity to live the Florida lifestyle right here at its best. 520 George Street South in Tarpon Springs. Beautiful waterfront property for sale, listed by the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty. Uh, we've got a commercial asset as well, 19206 U.S. Highway 19 North in Clearwater. This is over a million dollars, but it's a great opportunity. It's operating currently as a car lot, and there are many options. Could be could be all types of different types of businesses, but it's got five offices, reception area, kitchen break room, conference room, three covered detail bays. Uh, so great opportunity right here in beautiful Tampa Bay, 19206 U.S. Highway 19 North in Clearwater. And you can see all of our real estate listings at Platinum mvpteam.kw.com that's platinum mvpteam.kw.com and make sure you save our hotline number at some point you may need us we're going to be talking with fred d felice here you might want to talk about improving your water system at home 813-670-7372 call or text any questions comments you have we'd love to connect with you and also put you in touch with our 80 plus show partners uh, just give us a call 813-670-7372 and the quarterback show website is consumerqb.com at that site you can see links to all of our expert contributors at consumerqb.com all right let's jump into it we got fred d felice back in studio welcome back buddy always good to be here yeah love man it. yeah thanks for coming in waterscience.us great company yeah. i can personally say the water tastes great i use it at home my wife Lindsay and i use it to you know cook with drink and most of the time i've got this yeti right here filled up with it <laughs> yeah. and yeah i hope you're bathing in it as well i am absolutely it's, now, it's i know you up. have that big bathtub in your master bathroom i love it yeah. I'm, I'm a bath guy some people yeah. make fun of oh what you take baths <laughs> I'm, I'm, you don't take shower no i'll take bath. i, I don't know i like yeah. it better yeah throw the bath salts in there you know yeah. After a hard workout. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things people may not realize, uh, because we have chlorine in our water to, to uh, keep all the bacteria out. Right. Uh, your body absorbs all that chlorine right through your skin, Oof. whether you're showering or bathing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. There's so many things wrong with our water here in Tampa Bay. Yep. And I hate to talk all about the negative stuff, but... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's really up to us to take care of it when it gets to our home. Yeah. Uh, the water company does a great job. They they can take sewer water and make it purified to drink. It's that good. Wow. So uh, once it gets to our home, it's up to us to take care of it from there. To finish it off, finish, finish that process. Off. Right. And the first thing we want to do is eliminate the chlorine, the chloramine, mm -hmm. uh, the pharmaceutical drugs that's in our water. The microplastic particles, another big thing that only really has come to the attention of, of the medical field, in fact, uh, you know, just in the last few years. Yeah. So um, these are the things. And the great thing is we have the solutions to take care of all of that. And our systems are 
Uh, we do all the manufacturing and assembly right at our Palm Harbor facility. Nice. Uh, I am a master plumber. I have, uh, I'm a second generation master plumber, 60 years experience uh, in the industry. I was also with the Department of Environmental Resources uh, for a few years. And uh, over the years, I've really seen just about anything that can go wrong with water. Is that where you picked up a lot of your experience and kind oh, of figured, yeah. wow, here's a need? Yeah. And that basically, right, if you yeah. want to be successful, find a need and fill it. That's right. So we moved here to Florida 20 years ago. And the first thing everybody says, well, you need to get a water softener. I had no one idea what that was we didn't have that up north right so we did put one in and uh that's when i finally realized what's wrong with that uh in technology yeah and let's face it it's old technology but it's all people had here in florida yeah. years ago so over the years uh i was fortunate to work with uh, engineers and scientists in the industry and we helped develop some systems and today um, actually, we've been using this technology now for the last 12 years. Nice. So you don't need a water softener. You don't need salt. You don't need to waste any water. Yeah, and, the, and that's actually the wrong technology to use, as, exactly. you, as you mentioned on previous shows. I've learned a lot. I love hosting this show. I learned yeah. so much yeah. and, You know, with having great guests like Fred DeFelice here, waterscience.us on the show. And American made, that's a big hot button right? nowadays. And and we uh, we offer a lifetime warranty. Wow. So uh, we, our, our systems require very little maintenance. Our whole house system, in fact, uh, there's no maintenance for three to five years, depending on the size of the family. Wonderful. So no buying salt, no ever buying bottled water. Yeah. Uh, I, I've run into customers who literally were spending $7,500, $100 a month on bottled water. Wow. So you can finance our systems for a dollar a day. And uh, dollar a day, yeah. Oh, so and we're the roughly last couple thirty of months. bucks a month, yeah. And have fresh water without all those chlorine, the uh, pharmaceutical drugs, the microplastics, even bacteria. Absolutely. Yeah, dollar yeah. a day. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Fred D. Felice, WaterScience.us, and, and you know something else. I was I kind of went on that that bubbly craze for a minute. You know those little drinks that come out with the the little flavor. It gives you a little flavor, and it's yeah. you know kind of breaks. But I was talking to Lindsay, you know, obviously, you know, my wife, Lindsay, she is so in tune with health and nutrition and Absolutely. vegetarian for 10 years now or more. And pranic healer. I mean, she reads books all the time about health and, and the different ways that, you know, vitamins, herbs affect energy healing. But she had mentioned to me that she said, yeah, it says natural flavor on those cans. Yeah. And it gives you just a little kick of strawberry or cherry or whatever. And it's like, okay, great. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to do good here. Right. Yeah. And she, she tells me, nope, it's got, what is, what does the natural flavor actually have in it? It's the, um, uh, what's the, what was the stuff? I lost the word there, but it was in, used to be in all of the Chinese food that they would say, oh, it's don't have that. Um, what was yeah. that called? I, yeah. man, I'm going to, I'm going to have to look it up here in a minute, but, yeah. but, but it has that in it. It says natural flavor, but it doesn't actually tell you that. Oh, MSG. That's it. It's MSG. So that's, you know, some people buy that stuff too, and that's not good for you. Oh yeah. Most people have an, an acidic lifestyle. Yes. And, right. and the doctors will tell you everything about that, you know? Yep. The other thing, uh, I got a lot of education about fluoride in the water. Mm. You know, it's really sad. I think it was about five years ago they actually took the fluoride out of Pinellas County water. And then when new commissioners came in, they voted it back in. And uh, I, I, I recommend uh, your listeners really research uh, online yeah. if they can find out about fluoride in the water. It's, so is fluoride not good? Good. What's the? It's not good for anything. It's not good for anything. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of the the uh, holistic doctors I work with, yep, they're the ones that are really up on all this stuff. Mm. And, and and you know, you hang out with the right people, you're going to learn the right things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, because the the old cell was, oh well, it's it's good for your teeth, right, or something yeah. like that. I, I imagine if the dentist puts it on your teeth, it's okay. Yeah. But uh, a good example is if you want to have, uh, if you want to avoid sunburn. Right, you don't take that lotion and drink it. You put it on your skin. Exactly. Well, if you want to take care of your teeth, put it on your teeth. Don't drink it. Yeah. 
And and I've even seen um, water in the store for babies fortified with fluoride. Huh. Man, what are you doing? Yeah. So uh, it's important to to know. And I heard it. All, I heard I read somewhere almost that it was something to do almost like a Prozac, something to cool people, chill people out, make them more calm, more yeah. obedient. Yeah, I've read articles where they prove that it can reduce the IQ of children. Wow. I mean, it, it's deadly. Yeah. And it's not a pharmaceutical grade fluoride that they're putting in our water. It's actually oh, a waste. Uh, it's the waste from the aluminum industry. Hmm. Wow. And you can't bury it. It's so toxic. So they found a way to put it in the water to get rid of it. Wow. Unbelievable. So, look, this is the world we live in. Yep. Uh, you need to protect yourself. Yep. We have the answer, uh, and it's a simple process with us, <clears throat> a five-minute conversation on the phone. Yep. I could tell you exactly what a system will cost you, yep. the size of your family. I'll tell you which model we have. Uh, the financing is great. Uh, we have uh, same as cash financing as well. Very nice. Hold that bottle up too, Fred. If yeah. you're watching our TV show version, check out. You get You get some bottles. Yeah, we'll give you some glass bottles. Uh, we like we like our, our customers to use glass rather than plastic. Yep. Uh, you'll never have to buy bottled water or a bag of salt again. Perfect. Text the word water to our hotline, 813-670-7372. Simply send a text message to 813-670-7372, and we'll put you right in touch with Fred D. Felice, and he's a great partner of the show. Got a great product here, and I can personally say it's on my home. And the water, you can definitely tell a difference. And oh, it's yeah. something to, you know, not only the taste, but just to know mentally, like, hey, I'm doing the right thing here. Absolutely. You know, for longevity, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's the fountain of youth. It's worked pretty good for me so far. Absolutely, man. 60-plus <laughs> years in the business. You're in great shape. Yeah. All right. Fred D. Felice. More from Fred coming up here on the Consumer Quarterback Show, waterscience.us. And also, we're going to check back in with Fire Chief Dennis Jones here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. Hillsborough County Fire Chief uh, Dennis Jones on the Consumer Quarterback Show, as well as our feel-good story of the day. Here's a good one. Rescue dog saves sleeping neighbors from house fire. Stay with us right here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. Check out ConsumerQB.com. Hey, I'm Ken Shamrock, and you're here with Consumer Quarterback Show. And I say, Brandon Rhymes. Knock out your competition. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com.
You're listening to The Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, online at ConsumerQB.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813-670-7372. And we're back. We appreciate you hanging out with us here. Brandon Rhymes. I'm your host of The Consumer Quarterback Show, powered by the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty. A couple of hot properties for this segment, we just listed this property at 4209 Preserve Place. This is a golf course community, beautiful property, in-unit condo available right there in Palm Harbor, beautiful Palm Harbor, uh, right here in Tampa Bay in Landsbrook. It's a great opportunity to own real estate, and this condo is gorgeous. You've got to check it out. We have open houses going on as well uh, with the property. And 422 Wildwood Way in Bel Air, this is another home that is a gorgeous property, over $100,000 of recent renovations and a brand new roof at 422 Wildwood Way in Bel Air. Check out all of our real estate properties at PlatinumMVPTeam.KW.com. And this segment is brought to you by the Bill Maher Beach Resort, the official hotel partner of the Consumer Quarterback Show, the beautiful Bill Maher Beach Resort on Treasure Island. They've got two pools on site, Sloppy Joe's Beach Bar and Restaurant, and just a great time to be had over at the Bill Maher Beach Resort. Make sure you give Clyde Smith a call. He's the general manager. Let him know that the real estate quarterback sent you. Shout out to the Bill Maher Beach Resort on Treasure Island, the official hotel partner of the Consumer Quarterback Show. All right, we got Fred D. Felice in studio and uh, Fire Chief uh, Dennis Jones on the phone. And Dennis, we're going to kind of summarize our show here. And let's go. I wanted to have kind of alternating uh, questions to you and Fred. Uh, what is what is a top tip or a consumer tip? Something that you may, you know, again, just want to relay to our listeners, our viewers uh, of our TV show and our radio show. On the fire side, uh, one of the things. Uh, one of the things I am responsible for is emergency management that falls under the fire rescue and the fire chief and uh, those folks in the uh, community that want to be a part of uh, that I would suggest uh, one of the things we're doing is feeding Tampa Bay supporting them uh, we have volunteer Florida and there's a lot of ways that uh, the citizens the the folks that listen to you and uh, those in Hillsborough County can get involved and and help some of those that are facing the challenges of COVID, which has gotten all of our attention recently. Um, in addition to the things I'd mentioned earlier, the smoke alarms in your home, uh, fire alarms, and making sure that you have that extinguisher and uh, safe uh, plan to uh, exit your home if you do have that emergency. Yeah, and also, Dennis, we're, we're in the middle of hurricane season here. Uh, any words of wisdom when it comes to the, the hurricane planning and you know what, what you guys are recommending for us? Well, thanks for teeing that up. Absolutely, the uh, this is going to be a different year if uh, if the uh, COVID is still on us during hurricane season, and we have that hurricane, which we believe it will be uh, as far as far as the COVID continuing. Uh, it's going to require a lot more spacing in the shelters. Um, they're going to be a lot more crowded, a lot more challenged with that. So, most important tip for everyone in this area is to know uh, your zone. Know if you live in an evacuation zone. And if you do, to have a plan of where you're going to go and somebody else in your family that knows that plan, uh, the, the strong urgency here is to run from water and hide from wind. So if you're not in a surge zone or an evacuation zone, uh, you know, hunker, hunker down and stay in your home, especially if it's a newer home that's built to newer standards. Um, and uh, if you have to leave, then we certainly encourage you to go to a friend or family member who's out of the evacuation zone and only use shelters as a last resort. Um, it's more of a uh, John boat than a cruise ship, and uh, it's going to be crowded, uh, and we will protect you. We'll provide uh, safety, masks, and that sort of thing during uh, the, the COVID season if we do have a hurricane but I would certainly urge everyone to try to make alternative plans if at all possible. And then the county has a very robust plan uh, to respond to, to evacuate, and to care for people both uh, before, during, and after the storm. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for that, Dennis. We appreciate it. And let's go to Fred D. Felice. Top tips, Top nuggets tips. of advice, <clears throat> Fred. Um, people that live in apartments, we have so many apartment dwellers, right? Yep. 
we probably can't put a system in your to take care of your apartment, but you can buy a, a shower head filter. Mm. Really important. And you can get a countertop filter that connects to your faucet. Okay. You won't even need permission from your landlord to do that, probably. Uh, and then if you own a home and if you have a water softener and you're tired of getting salt and everything that goes with that, we're offering a $500 trade-in to those people. Very nice. And uh, if you don't have a water softener and you want to make use of us, uh, we're offering free installation. Very nice. So we always take care of uh, your list as, uh, whenever we can Excellent. to the best of our ability. We keep our margins tight. We don't have salespeople. You, when you call on the phone, you're going to get me or I'm going to come to your home. So, Very nice. And no pressure. If you like what we have, we'll let you buy it. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Good stuff. All right. Every day we're going to tell you something good in our feel good story of the day. Tell you something positive here. Tell me something good. All right. It's got a rescue dog that saved sleeping neighbors from house fire. Tennessee authorities said a rescue dog named uh, became a hero on the 4th of July by alerting the owner that a house next door to a fire next door. Look, Jeff LeCat said his three-year-old rescue dog, Rue, was barking frantically and unusually at his front door just before 10.45 p.m. last in the uh, Twin Oaks neighborhood, about 20 miles south of Nashville. When he opened the door to investigate, she went flying out. He followed and discovered her house, her neighbor's house was on fire. The cat immediately pounded on their door, walking the or waking the family of three and their pets who escaped unharmed. Uh, he used a garden hose until the firefighters arrived. In a twist of fate, Rue and LeCat would have never found each other if not for the woman who lives in the home that caught fire. The woman uh, is a dog groomer, and the reason that LeCat adopted Rue 15 months earlier, she knew LeCat had lost his German Shepherd, and she also knew that Rue, who was a Belgian Melanese uh, breed similar to German Shepherds, was in home uh, in need of a home. So she facilitated the adoption and uh, what a great opportunity. And according to Franklin Fire Marshal Andy King, fireworks caused the fire, resulting in approximately $50,000 in damage to the home. And Dennis, I want to kind of swing that one over to you, man. Uh, fire Chief Dennis Jones here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. How, how much how, how much types of cases, how many types of cases do you see that happen? Like, a you know, something that's supposed to be fun, fireworks, starting a fire. Yeah, that's a great question, especially uh, when we've just celebrated uh, – probably the biggest fireworks holiday, the 4th of July. And uh, we would just urge everyone to leave that to the professionals and uh, try not to use those uh, in your home. They're very dangerous. Every year there are dozens of injuries uh, and uh, more than that throughout the United States. Um, great story with the dog. I just hired uh, 40 new employees. It sounds like I need to go and recruit some uh, canines to support our efforts here. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that's a, that's interesting. And then also the New Year's is one I hear. You hear yes, New sir. Year's, people go out and shoot their guns straight up in the air or whatever. It's got to have a little bit of an angle on it. And then some un unknowing bystander miles away gets struck by it. It happens every year, doesn't it? It does. And uh, I, re I recall working in the downtown area uh, in the fire service earlier in my career. And uh, uh, you're exactly right. New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and Fourth of July. You could always hear the the guns going off, and what whatever goes up has to come down somewhere. Wow. Yeah. So that's make sure that's a consumer tip out there, uh, Fred. About thirty seconds back to you, my friend. Top uh, tips, words I'm, of wisdom. The best thing, please visit my website. We have a lot of information there. Okay. Waterscience.us. Yep. And feel free to email me and. Uh, there's specific information you want. I'm more than happy to send you links that you can research on your own. Very good. Fred DeFelice, yeah. watersciences.us. Yeah. Dennis, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you, man. It's been a great time talking and some good good nuggets of wisdom there from you. Appreciate that. Make sure you got your uh, hurricane evacuation kit. Yes, sir. Will do. All right. Thanks. We appreciate it, Dennis. And as we always end our show, we want to be that consumer advocate. We always want you to consider committing a random act of kindness. Do something kind for one another. Uh, great time to volunteer, donate some time, donate some blood, uh, be involved in the community and do something kind for one another, something outside of the norm that you might do. Maybe even something like phoning a friend, someone you haven't talked to in a while that you know might be down. Uh, maybe a, a, you know, a friend that's older or dealing with some 
potential issues but do something kind for one another and we'll see you next time right here on the consumer quarterback show make sure you follow us online at brandon rhymes one on instagram and twitter at brandon rhymes pa and the platinum mvp team at keller williams realty on facebook we'll see you thanks you've been listening to the consumer quarterback brandon rhymes whether it's real estate consumer or financial advice let brandon call your next play contact brandon rhymes at 813-670-7372 that's 813-670-7372 online at consumerqb.com and join us next time for